What's going on guys, Garrett King here, AKA Short Stash, and I'm a professional videographer and photographer out of Southern California. I've been a long time Sony shooter, and I was really pumped when Adorama hit me up to chat about the new 24-70 G Master II lens. So before we head out into the field to use this lens, let's take an actual first look at it here in the studio. Okay, so first things first, we got the Sony case. I love these just because when I have buddies use or borrow these lenses, I always put it in this case. So, all right, put this over here. Take this lens cap off. And the hood, I don't really ever use my lens hood that much. I probably should use it more, but they do offer this little gap here for filters that you can have on the glass as well and be able to maneuver like a two to five stop polarizer, all that good stuff. The weight of this is actually really nice. Um, I'm gonna set this over here as well. This looks really good. I can tell that it's quite a bit lighter. First things I notice are the aperture ring. So on all the new G Masters, it seems like they're putting this aperture ring in, which is great. Uh, it helps for not only photo, but video. And we'll get to that here in a second. First look down here as well is this iris lock, which is nice for the aperture ring. So when you actually have a, you know, an aperture that you want to be set on, so say it's like at 2.8 or anything like that, you can lock it so it doesn't shift. That's nice uh, for me. I'll use that from time to time. Other times I just put it on automatic over here and I'll do it in the camera. Next thing I notice, which is really cool, is this smooth and tight for actually adjusting your focal length. So on smooth, which on the other model here, we'll take a look at here in a second as well. It's tough because sometimes if you don't have steady hands, when you're zooming in and out, it can just be too quick and you know, jolty like that. So for me, if you do have like the tighter grip on it, it's a little bit easier to actually have that flow and have that good focal length adjustment. But if you do have steady hands, um, having this smooth on here is nice too. So that's a, that's a plus. And then of course down here, the clicking on and off with the aperture is great. I don't ever use this off because your aperture will just kind of like slide around. On is always nice. You can hear those individual clicks. So that for me is enough to upgrade and use this lens versus the other one, but let's take a look and have them side by side. Okay, so we have them both side by side. This is the first version, this is the second version. Right off the bat, obviously you can tell the length of these is different. Uh, this one's a tiny bit you know, skinnier, and then of course in person you'll feel the weight. Initially, I think my first impressions, honestly, where it's like, oh, it looks somewhat to the 16 to 35 in size, and then you actually compare it to both of them, and it's quite a bit of difference. So, first of all, with the weight, it's harder to uh, adjust a lot of times on a gimbal. So, for me, video purpose wise, I use a 24 to 70 for almost every shoot. I'm not a big photographer with a 24 to 70, I'm mainly shooting on primes, but I've always had. Uh, great success with just shooting really sharp photos at 2.8 on the first version and I know it'll be equally as sharp on the second version. So after looking at both of these, I feel like I get this question a lot and some people, you know, when they're trying to figure out what lens they're going to buy, uh, whether it's just starting out or they're going to try to up their game in photography or videography, people ask me, what lens should I get? Uh, for me, it's kind of a complex question because it depends what type of shooter you are. And if you're not really well versed in that area yet, I would say, honestly, even if you are experienced, a 24 to 70 and a 2.8 is really nice. And this would be the lens I suggest that you buy, especially the newer version that's out here in my hands right now would be the one to go to. It's obviously lighter. Uh, like we said, it's gonna be easier to balance on a gimbal. It's gonna be a lot more versatile than you think. And I think, uh, you know, having these separate focal lengths, uh, being able to adjust back and forth is gonna be really key for you. Knowing if you're more of a like distant shooter to a close shooter, all those things are very important in finding what's your style. So for me, I would say this is my go-to lens, especially in videography. And of course, photography, you can just use this wherever you go and only have one with you. So on top of the weight being different, obviously the size of this lens is smaller. One more key element would be the high performance tracking while zooming during video. I think that's gonna be a huge deal and we're gonna test that while we're out in the field. Uh, it has two extra motors. So the first one had two motors, this one has four motors. Um, without being too technical uh, and nerdy about that whole thing, I'll break it down as simple as I can. But essentially when you're zooming while focusing on a subject, it's able to keep that focus a lot smoother and quicker and just more dialed in but uh, we'll have to put that to the test when we're out in the field. So without wasting any more time here in the studio, we're actually gonna put this thing to use and get out in the field and create some magic.
All right, guys, so we just made it out here to Balboa Pier, linked up with my boy Justin here, and we are going to try to figure out a certain scene um, with him prepping to go surf. There's not a lot of swell going on right now, so we're just gonna get the in-between moments, uh, limbering up, heading to go out there, get some portraits, uh, a few video clips, things like that, and just kind of see what the 24 to 70 G Master 2 does. So, um, we're gonna kind of head down, do a little pep talk, figure out the angles and all that stuff, and then just kind of dive into it. All right, so we got a few different shots earlier. Now I'm gonna kind of test out one of the key features was the high uh, tracking performance um, with the autofocus. So it's gonna be able to keep tracked on him even while I'm zooming in and keep it locked in as he's moving past me um, to kind of work those four motors. So we'll put that to the test. I'm gonna have him walking past me and get some of that sun behind him. and just kind of go from there and see how it turns out. I'll start zooming in on you, and it still stays locked and focused no matter where you're going. Which a lot of times when you are zooming in and out. It's yeah, it'll like go back yeah. and come back. So yeah. we'll do one more. I like the one where you're just coming straight at me. Okay. All right, so we are pretty much kind of halfway through um, testing out the lens so far, and everything's been good. I have noticed, obviously, it's a lot lighter. Uh, so that's been good, kind of feels somewhat to like a 35 or so, which is nice because typically the first version was quite a bit heavier. And it's held up to, you know, the tracking, the autofocus has been really good. I'm testing out some of that zoom, doing a little bit of dolly zoom, just kind of playing with it in and out filming, and actually had it stay tracked on him the whole time, no matter what direction he was coming, if the backlight was going to be blasting through, just several different scenarios and problems that you run into with autofocusing and filming. Uh, it seemed to stick with him the whole time, so that's really nice. And everything we've kind of put it to has been great. So I think we're gonna wrap up with some final shots of him coming out into the water, getting some of that back light behind him, getting some of that nice little soft bokeh as well. So probably shoot more 50 to 70 millimeters going out this direction and see what we get. All right, so after actually getting to use this out in the field um, with the significant size difference in the weight reduction, as well as the autofocus performance and the sharpness in the bokeh, which was pretty insane out there, I feel like Sony's kind of outdone themselves with this new version. And I'm really thankful that Adorama had me on to actually test this out and get a first look at it. And I appreciate you guys for that. So don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.